Good morning, y'all. It's Max with My Kind of Beats, and we're here at the Old Quarter in Hanoi, Vietnam. Now, today, what I want to do is I want to bring you with me. I'm going to take you to some food markets, take you to some delicious food, and show you what a typical day has been like for me here in Hanoi. I hope y'all are ready to come along. I can't wait to bring you along with me. So the streets are still pretty pretty dead right now. People are maybe taking their children to work or coming and setting up their stalls. But if you come later around the old quarter and it's maybe like nine o'clock onward, I mean it gets packed, the roads get filled with motorbikes, and it gets hustling and bustling. So if you really want to walk around and cover as much ground as you can, I suggest waking up early before the streets really pack in. Oh, I was walking to the market and I found a lady who just started frying up some bong chong, something you've got to try if you're in Vietnam around Tet. Now, what bong chong is, is it's going to be sticky rice, stuffed with mung bean paste, and fatty pork, wrapped in a banana leaf, and steamed. But what she's doing is she's treating it like a leftover, and she's frying it up in a ton of pork fat. So now all we have to do, wait street side, wait patiently, wait until these are nice and crispy from all that pork fat. Oh man, she got this bag and she just keeps bringing out more and more goodies, more pork pack. She got the cinnamon sausage. Gotta get some of that with this bong chong. Oh, Chung is finally ready. I got some of the cinnamon pork sausage to go along with it just because I couldn't resist at all. Mm. I'm telling you, you get from the cooking before where it's been steamed, so it's just ooey and gooey and got that stickiness from that sticky rice. But you do, you get the nice little pork crispiness from the outside. She had the chili sauce, you get the creaminess from the mung bean paste, and then you get little bits of fatty pork from the inside. I mean, I've had this just steamed. I'm telling you, the way you want to have this is the leftover style where they fry it up. Now I've got to try out her pork cinnamon sausage, see how it is. Man, I never knew pork and cinnamon were that good together. I mean, the cinnamon's not hidden at all either. It's the first ingredient you get, but it's that Vietnamese cinnamon, so it's nice and sweet and works with that fatty, salty pork. So you get like a salty, sweet, a little bit of spice, porkiness. Ooh. A little pickle veg for a fresh mat. Mm. Man, you can see she's getting it going now. I bet people come by and just get bong chong after bong chong after bong chong. Just love the atmosphere being right here. It's super close to the street. People are just flying by, coming by, grabbing something while you're on your tiny stool here, enjoying it. Just another simple, yet superb meal here in Vietnam. All right, so we finally made it to the Hang Bee Market, a market that's been a part of the Hanoian's culture for hundreds of years. A place where you can come, get fruits, produce, meats, tech specialties, or whatever you may need. And this is why pho is so delicious. Look at the amount of bones they're using to make that rich broth. I could get in here and just get a little bit of this. It's co-dishes. So that means they can take like pork belly or fish, and they're gonna simmer it in nook mom and like sugar. So it's gonna get a nice caramelized brown on the outside. And it's absolutely delicious. Try it if you're in Vietnam. Try to find it somewhere. All right, 
uh, that's about it for the market. Pretty small, not too much to see. Like I said, probably more of a place for locals to come and socialize, maybe grab some things you need for the week or to grab before the New Year's. But the good news about being close to the market is we're so close to so many good restaurants. Let's go hit a couple. So this restaurant doesn't have much to it, but what I find interesting is on the left, blue chairs. On the right, red chairs. Maybe there's a reason, I don't know. So I came here because they're known for Fun Thing, which is another soup noodle dish that's originated here in Hanoi. flavor to it. Not too intense, not greasy at all. Doesn't leave a coating in your mouth. Just slides down nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and add a little citrus with the calamansi here. And just a few chilies here. I really like the amount of add-ins they do here because you get so many different like textures and flavors going on. But other than that, it's really light, really refreshing. Just something that you can eat, fill your stomach, and feel good and keep moving throughout the day. This time, construct a bite. A little chili sauce. Mm. I'm surprised. I think I like it better without the chili sauce. I'm just gonna go more natural. Use the fresh chilies as opposed to the chili sauce. One of my favorite additions to any soup noodle is the yu tao. See how it is. Mm. Soaks in that broth nicely. Like I said, you get that little bit of greasy, doughy, chewiness. But man, this broth is so subtle. Got a little bit of earthiness from it, from the mushrooms. I just find myself having to add a lot of add-ins to really get this where I want it. Like I said, if you want something lighter, it's got a lot of textures, a lot of different flavors in it, probably a soup to try. Okay, nice little light noodle to kind of keep me going. I mean, literally right here across the street is another place I want to try. So all I gotta do is cross. Okay, I'm a little confused. I think these are the same restaurant, but like one's open, one's not. So I'm gonna go to the one that's open. Just post up in my little corner uh, with my leggings here. The tables are literally just a silver tray with two little seats under them. I'm just a master with the scissors, chipping away, getting that dry beef salad ready for multiple people. Okay, I went a little overboard with the ordering, but this place is known for the Nam Thich Bo Ko, which is a dried beef salad, so I wanted to get that one here. They also had the Nim Chua, which is like a fermented pork, and I got it two ways. I got it the regular way, and then I got it with the fried version as well. You can see, it's just a salad floating on top of sauce right here. Got two different types of dried meat. Oh, there's three or four here. Oh man, need some sauce first. Just gonna layer a little chili sauce here. And get this mixed in real good. sauce it's in is a little bit sweet and that dried meat man you know it's dried but it's nice and flavor packed mm. I like this it has a lot of different types of meat in it you get some that are thicker a little meatier and you get some they're just thin like beef jerky they're extremely sweet Loving that julienne, papaya, the fresh mint. The fresh mint is key for this. I feel like it'd be too much, but that mint pulls back just enough. Now, try out the fermented pork. It's got a little chili dipping sauce here, which we get to dip it in. So it's gonna kinda get as much of that dipped in there as I can. Try it out. Mm. That was really interesting. It's, it almost doesn't taste like pork because it is, it's sour. It kind of makes your mouth water a little bit. But at the first, I swear it tastes just a little bit fruity almost. Other than that, it's like sour and then you get like the meaty texture 
from a pork. But other than that, the pork flavor is really small. Let me try, I gotta go another bite. That was so interesting. I mean, if you didn't tell me that you know, was pork, I would have a hard time knowing that was pork. I gotta try this fried version. That is awesome fried. You get a really breaded crunch, almost like a bready crunch you would get on like a mozzarella stick around that pork. It really pulls back on the sourness since they fried it, and then you can soak in so much more of that sauce. So you get that sweet, like chili sauce, and that bready fried doughiness, and then just a hint of like the sour porkness. So it all works a lot more balanced. Quickly we'll get more of this fried ones. That is awesome. Coat it in the sauce. Look at it hold on to all the sauce. You know we're about that sauce. As you can see, you got my last one, the bun bok bun bok, a little piece of meat with it, hit it in that dipping sauce, and try it out. Mm, that texture of that rice dumpling is so addictive. The filling inside was a little disappointing for me. It's not as flavorful as some I've had. You still get that rice dumpling wrapper, but the inside is pork and mushroom and a very tiny shrimp. I like it when they just put a whole big shrimp in it. That's to me when it's at its most flavorful. A good dish, but I'm telling you the fermented fried pork and then the dried beef salad are what this place does really well. All right, gotta work off some of those meals because we're gonna have a huge meal tonight full of eel done so many different type of ways. So we're headed to the Dong Xuan Market, which is the biggest indoor market here in Hanoi. All right, so we're here at the market, about to walk inside and check it out. You can tell it's lunchtime in here. You see everybody sitting down, grabbing a bite to eat, but I don't really see the wet market part. I don't know if it's outside, I'm we'll gonna to keep looking, but this definitely reminds me a lot of the Din Than Market in Saigon. It's humongous, and there's so many goods you can get. You see more hats, sunglasses on the lower floor, and when you look up, it looks like you can get all types of fabrics and dresses. Ah, and here we go, not surprised. Usually where you can find shopping for goods, you can usually find some good food nearby. Just past one lady, they were selling a few things on the little side right there, and now I start seeing some uh, signs for some actual food. Oh yeah, you see locals chowing down right now. Next to a hair salon, next to a good store. I love this, just a nice little alley packed with food in here. It's amazing. I almost regret having eaten because there's so many Vietnamese specialty dishes down this just a single little alley. It does not matter. Southern Vietnam, Central Vietnam, Northern Vietnam, they had any food you would want in there. That is an alley to check out if you come hungry. Oh, I've got to hit that before I leave Hanoi. Alright, today's been great so far. We got to see a lot of markets, got to try some really good foods. But I think we need to finish off with one more big feast. Now, something I truly love is eel. I'm gonna get a place right here. This is apparently doing eel six different ways. Let's get in here and try as many as we can. Okay, so what I did is I went with the vermicelli blend, I got the fried eel, and then the soup. Felt like that was a good mixture of them all. Get these three out here, doctor them up, and just feast on this eel. Okay, so the soup came out first, and wow, I'm surprised on the consistency of it. It almost looks like things I've had, like a snake soup, or a, like a shark fin soup consistency. It's almost really gelatinousy and got a little jiggle to it. Ooh, and I got a nice warm broth to go as well. I like that addition right there. It's almost got like a chicken pot pie creaminess on the inside. Not gelatinous as I thought, but I would describe it as like kind of like a goopy. Like you get on the insides of a chicken pot pie. It's got nice, lean, white eel meat on the inside. Mm. 
loaded with mushrooms. This has to be a big time seller in the winter. I think it just needs like a little kick of some pepper. Mm. Oh man, that little kick of pepper really makes a big difference. Oh, this is the vermicelli one. Look at those vermicellis, that noodles at the bottom. <laughs> They're just kind of stuck together. I'm gonna have to work these loose. Get everything uniform in here, nice and mixed up. Looks like the eel they're using for this one is a dried eel they've done. I don't know if they fried it or just dried it. It looks like it's just dried out to me, but it looks like it could have a little bit of a fry on the outside as well. That vermicelli noodle has held on to so much flavor. It's got a great sweetness from it, almost like a little bit of a fishy sweetness. But I mean, it just makes your mouth water. It's so sweet. And then this little fried, dried out eel is crunchy. No real spice coming from it, but you do, you get almost like that fish skin that you get in your soup noodles. That you get that crunch, and then you get that little bit of fishy flavor from, but you're really going for the texture with this add-in. Pro tip, I always try to scoop as much of the garlic out of the vinegar as I can. Just a chili powder here as well. Oh yeah, now that's Vietnamese food the way I know it. So many flavors and components, yin and yang, the balance, the color, the structure, the textures. This is Vietnam right here. There's so much going on in this dish now. Amazing. Incredible bowl of noodles. Maybe my favorite bowl of noodles from today. Mm. Cleanse the palate with my broth. All right, let's dig in here and see what we can find. Move the mint and the cucumber out of the way. And there it is. These little fried eel, little cakes almost, little meatballs, I guess. And a nice sauce down here. Just swimming in the sauce. Can y'all see the sauce it's swimming in? Look at that. It's just in soaking in that flavor. Oh, yes, please. Just try one in its pure form here. Not my favorite dish. You can say I think the noodles are going to be the highlight from today. I think this though, get it with some fresh herbs and get other ingredients playing together, but it just doesn't have quite the right texture I was hoping for. I was hoping for something a little more tender, a little more fall apart, but it's a little chewier and a little harder than I want it to be. Mm. It's okay, again, the texture. There's almost a dry cardboard feel to it. I was really hoping to get a lot of eel, white meat, that would be nice and tender and just fall apart. It just doesn't have the right texture for me. So for me, I think I gotta keep eating these noodles. The vermicelli noodle bowl with the fried eel. Ooh, that's where it's at. All right, y'all, I'm gonna eat quick because this place is filling up in here. I'm gonna keep spicing these up, keep getting after them. I'll catch y'all outside. So I'm pretty full, had a lot to eat today, but you know, I always keep just a little bit of room for that sweet tooth of mine at the end of the day. So let's go, I think I got something that you'll really like and you'll wanna try when here in Hanoi. All right, now the dessert, I got to show y'all and I indulge in way too much when here in Vietnam, is a fried banana and these people are doing a really good fried banana and they are extremely friendly. Yeah. So you see they work as a team here. She takes the bananas, peels them, rolls them out, flattens them, throws them in the batter, and then he throws it in, and then she scrapes out the excess. Now, some fried foods are good, fried twice, but these you really want to get fresh, and they're always cranking through because people are always coming up, grabbing a few, and rolling on. And I got my high being caught out the fire. You can see the grease starting to come through on that paper. Oh man, I gotta let this cool off a little bit. I've had third degree burn on these too many times. All right, I really don't think it's cooled off enough, but I cannot wait any longer. Inside of this, look at that ooey gooey inside. It's fried to a golden brown on the outside. Great crunch, perfect amount of thickness from the batter to the ooey gooey banana on the inside. It's just insane. It tastes like a fried plantain at first, but then the aftertaste is just of an overripe sweetened banana. 
I hope y'all enjoyed today. Just showing you what a typical day in Hanoi is like for me. Hitting the markets, finding good food, just relaxing and having a good time. So glad I got to bring you along with me into Max with my kind of beats, and I will catch you at the next video.